Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Let's Process That podcast. I am one of your hosts. I'm Emily Christopher. And I'm Nick Honorkamp. And we are so glad that you have joined us. Um, if this is your first time listening, uh, hey, what's up? Welcome to the uh, Let's Process That fam. If you're a returning listener, thank you. Thanks for joining in. We really appreciate you. Um, and we also appreciate that uh, we've been very busy. Nick and I are going to talk about some of our busyness. Uh, I was the reason we didn't have an episode last week. But you know what? We're back. We're better than ever. Life is happening. We've had a lot of stuff going on, Nick. Okay, so here's the big thing. If you miss an episode, you better have a darn good reason for missing an episode. And since you've been on, since you've been introduced in the last few minutes, you've been waving that left hand around a lot. So, so talk about what's on your left hand and why we missed a week because some girl is like busy being pursued. Well, I am engaged. Look at this. Look at this rock, baby. Um, yes, Adrian and I are now engaged and um, just over the moon. It's it's been beautiful. Um, he proposed to me, uh, while we were in North Carolina visiting family and friends a couple of weeks ago up on Mount Pisgah on the Blue Ridge Parkway, baby. Um, and it was great. We had some friends on a hike with us and he only told one friend on the way up the mountain that he was going to propose. He's such a good secret keeper. He didn't even tell anybody except my mom, um, the morning of, and so, it was great. It was beautiful. And now uh, we got to plan a wedding. Well, I want to say thank you on behalf of the Let's Process That podcast that you married our producer. Yeah, That was a brilliant business move, and I'm really excited about that. The other thing I'm curious about is that Adrian is from Poland. Do you have any, mm-hmm. any thoughts or ideas of what you might do for his home folks? Yes, absolutely. Well, so right now um, we will probably have two weddings, um, which is exciting and fun. <laughs> weddings, weddings, weddings. Um, so yeah, for those, I know someone know, who's available to do that, by the way. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone generously offered, like I will travel internationally to officiate. So thank yeah. you, Nick, for your generosity. Um, Glad but to. yeah, so for those of you who don't know, um, Adrian is from Poland and all his family's over there, except for his parents, his parents, um, live here in Virginia beach with us and, uh, not with us, but in <laughs> Virginia beach, we're not on a com- commune compound right now, but, um, yeah, so we will definitely go to Poland and have either like a reception kind of thing, or maybe a whole nother wedding. Um, his mom was like, let's rent a castle. And I said, say less. I will gladly, <laughs> Be married in a, a castle in Poland, um, but yeah, and then of course we'll get we'll get married stateside, of course, because um, for those of us who know Adrian and I well, we love a party, we love to dance. We're both like really into um, music that gets you grooving. Uh, so yeah, we're we'll definitely celebrate. So it'll be a good time. <laughs> well, I'm excited for you publicly. Thank let you. me just say congratulations. Thanks. Thank the world of, of you, but also thank the world of Adrian. And um, you you could pull me out of retirement. Few things uh, could, but you uh, could pull me out of retirement. Just let me know if you need me for anything. I will. Don't worry, Michael Jordan. I'll be calling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm and available. This, I, I really think we'll save this for a whole episode. Um, but one thing, I, I've recently been doing some uh, divorce care and counseling for other people, mm. which has been really beautiful. Um, I mean, I've been counseling, especially like young women and teenage girls um, since, gosh, I got graduated from college and at college, I one of my minors was counseling. And so um, it's been a joy to walk with people through different hardships. But um, now that I'm on this side of it, it's been a real blessing to start counseling and just doing my best to walk alongside people who are coming out of divorce. And one of the things that um, I was recently talking about with someone was how healing this relationship has been and how Adrian has been such a, I I don't even know. I, I haven't even been able to wrap my head around it, but like 
he was definitely a major part of that journey of building trust again and mm-hmm. dreaming again and being able to love again. And so there's really a whole nother thing. And like I said, I feel like it's probably a whole podcast episode about um, finding love after tragic yeah. heartbreak, you know? So yeah. I want to know when, when do you know that you're ready for a second marriage? I mean, after mm. something has been painful, difficult, public, all the stuff, how do you know when you're ready to be, Begin to look. You you've seen people who get married and then they get divorced and remarried and divorced, remarried, and mm-hmm. they, they they just can't be alone. How do you know when it's time or you're healthy enough for another relationship? Now we don't have to unpack that today, but I'm I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, yeah. I it is so different for every person. Um, I know for me, I really took my healing journey so seriously. Like I I know even before, like when we were separated, I was doing the hard work. I was in therapy. I was taking every step for inner healing that I possibly could so that I could just be healthy for myself. Not necessarily, it wasn't even thinking about for another partner. Um, but I think, yeah, it looks different. I wish I could say there was some aha moment. Um, but I definitely think your healing should come before you trying to fill the void of a person with another partnership or romantic entanglement. Um, yeah, let me, let me sit with that for a while. Cause I, I'm trying to think when my, when my moment was, but I know that so, trust was going to be probably the longest thing sure. to build. With another well, th- there's a, a Christian ministry called Divorce Care, and one of their mm-hmm. principles is you should remain single one year for every four years you were married. So if mm-hmm. you were married for 12 years, you need three years to just like unpack the last marriage, figure out who you are in this season, be healthy, and then be prepared to not only meet your own needs, but then be available for somebody else's. And and you just said something that was fascinating. They put this generic time limit on stuff, yeah. which you and I know sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And you said every person is unique and different. I do think that there it'd be, it's wise to take a season, whatever, however long that mm-hmm. is, to get healed from that. And because this is going to sort of lead into what we're going to talk about tonight, yeah. figure out who you are today mm-hmm. and who you want on your journey today. Yeah. And some of the people on our journey are holdovers from the 80s. We don't even have clothes from the 80s. We don't. We need to move on, y'all. We, we got to figure out how to get new people in the boat for a new season of our life. And I would think your, you know, your, your marriage spouse would probably be the most important one, right? Oh, gosh, absolutely. Well, I mean, this is the person that um, you are doing life with. You know, every mm-hmm. everything that you are now, that that's – they're – one with you. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's huge. And even before, gosh, it seems like a lot of times when people get out of, and and this is not even for people who are divorced, but you know, they may have dated someone for a long time and just had really a terrible breakup and heartbreak. Um, we try to fill the void of that. And I think a lot of times people just don't give enough space to heal and you just rush into the next thing and you repeat. We've talked about repeated cycles a lot, especially this season. Um, but you get right back into it and you haven't addressed those issues that were also plaguing you. Um, because my biggest thing too, is I, I had plenty of stuff I needed to address on my own. I had things that I needed to take responsibility for. And so if we don't take the time to address those things, then it just, becomes a problem in the next relationship and we carry it over, um, or you carry over your dysfunctions, um, or your expectations from the previous relationship into the new one. And it's, it can just be a mess. And I'm definitely not saying that I've done it perfectly, but I will say that, um, Adrian and I are very unique with having a very healthy relationship. Um, almost to the point where I'm like, this can't be real sometimes. Um, you know, it's like, but we've been together, um, two and a half years and walked through a lot, um, together and, uh, you know, addressed the issues. I think, I think the big difference is we've been proactive and not reactive. Um, because as soon as we feel some type of way about anything, like if he annoys me, if he ticks me off, I say it immediately and vice versa. 
Oh, he called me out on some stuff when we were home with my parents right before the day before we got engaged. He go, was like, go Adrian. Did I tell you this? I didn't even know if I shared no. this with you. No. He, so, um, we had gone to my parents' house and, um, I, I guess I would, I turned into a pretty bossy person and he oh. like, pulled, Oh my gosh. I know. When I know. did this happen? I don't know. <laughs> Can you believe it? Um, and he pulled me aside and he said, Emily, every time we come to your parents' house, you act really bossy and entitled. And there's like a side of you that I only see when we're here. And I go, you know what? I revert back to my teenage self. And I lean into my like whatever childhood crap. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're so right. Like it's so blatantly obvious. But until, yeah. but he gently, he was like, even the way that you speak to your mom, um, uh, even the way you address me is very different. And wow. it's not fair. And I don't think it's good. And I was just, one, I, I I mean, I was deeply like, oh my gosh, I've got to fix this. But also I was like, daggum, I love this man. Daggum. Daggum, this man, he gently was like, hey, this is, this is some behavior that's not healthy. And so I asked for his forgiveness. I went and asked my mom for forgiveness. Oh, Sherry. I know. And you know what? My mom is so sweet because I've always been a little brat. Um, but yeah. she was like, oh, honey, you're okay. Like, well, and I was like, no, mama, like, I'm really sorry. And I said, Adrian had brought this to my attention. And I just want to say I'm sorry to you as well. And so that is an example of like such healthy relationship stuff that that we have is that I, when I'm open, it hurt. It hurt when he called me out. But I'm very open to him correcting me and vibe checking me and then vice versa with him. Like we, we can just do that and neither one gets offended. We apologize. We correct the behavior and there you go. It's not this big drawn out thing where we're doing the silent treatment or uh, justifying our actions and getting upset and this tizzy. But I, I just, I'm like, wow, I've never had that before. I've never had that. Okay, two things. Number one, we should entitle this episode, Dad Gum, I Love That Man, right? <laughs> because we all do. We all want someone to stand up to you and put you in your place and thank God it was Adrian. <laughs> Number two. Wait, that's that. Emily, we all want that? Nick, we've all oh, been waiting yeah. for that. I have told you in the past, you're a handful. And I've told you it's going to take the Long Ranger to ride that horse. Oh, and gosh. I'm so thankful that the Long Ranger has showed up. I mean, I, there you go. You number it. two. Number two is you perfectly segue into our conversation for tonight. Mm. And the fact that you went back home and fell into bad behavior. Mm -hmm. And if we keep childhood people around, we might end up in childhood behavior when we're around those people. And so, you, I mean, you, you weren't even trying. You were just talking about your life and I was listening. And I was like, but that's what happens when we have people that know us as, as teenagers or a season of our life and we keep them in our life. When we're around them, we play that role. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. That role keeps us from moving forward into new stuff. And so um, when you sent me the quote that you sent me and said, I want to talk about this, well, you and I haven't talked about it. You just sent me the quote and I've been processing it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you just did. You fell back into an old behavior because you were with people that raised you in that house. And it's got to be hard when it's your parents. When you're an mm -hmm. adult, you go back to your parents' house. But it's a great example because we do that in other relationships in our life. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And and let us start by saying that doesn't mean relationships can't evolve and change evolve and grow. Evolve change, grow. Um, because I've had, there's, you know, there's some people that, and, and it's very rare, there's usually a handful of people that you can do that with in your life. Um, but if we're not careful, I have seen it so many times when people get around, you know, certain friend groups, certain family members, like, everything just reverts back to a toxic behavior or back to some foolishness. And you're like, whoa, what? 
who is this person? Um, it was, it was kind of like that even in college when I would have friends of friends visit from out of town and I was right. like, whoa, they acted so different around yeah. their hometown friends than they do yep. here at college. Um, but it is crazy how in an instant we can be pulled back and it's like, what is that? And, and how do we become self-aware enough to stay in our growth? Without reverting like backwards. Yep. Before you get into your quote, mm -hmm. a friend of ours, mine and yours, um, a young woman, she went on a mission trip to Greece a couple mm -hmm. years ago. And she's always been known as a worship leader, singer, musician. Mm -hmm. That's always been her thing. Yeah. And she goes to Greece and she comes back and she says, Nick, you won't believe this, but I feel like I know what I want to do with the rest of my life. I want to preach. And I was like, whoa, that's way different than what you've always felt. And what had happened is she had gotten away from her family, gotten away from her friends, went to a foreign place, and in that moment was allowed to reimagine herself. Her parents didn't do anything wrong. Her family didn't do anything wrong. Her friends didn't do anything wrong. But because she was out of her current environment, there was no restriction that held her to all the expectations we had on her. And so she goes away and she's like, I want to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of some of the seasons of life. We have a moment, an opportunity, a job. And if we're not careful, the very environment that we're used to is not congruent anymore mm -hmm. with the opportunity in front of us. Mm -hmm. And I am one of those guys that believes a lot in environment. The environment is, is the precursor to creation, that when you create the environment, you then create the opportunity for good things to live. And the friends that we have and the people that give us feedback really do provide the environment in which we live in. And some of those, we outgrow them, and their definition of us, their perception of us, is now a hindrance and not helpful in any way. Mm -hmm. So I think two things that I would like to process. One, how do we realize when that time, like, when is something holding us back? Mm -hmm. And then two, how do we make ourselves uncomfortable enough to try out other environments of growth? Ooh, I like. Because, you know, we're talking about even just the scenario that you gave. Someone had to leave the country, right? <laughs> and do something very uh, out of their comfort zone for them to get this realization, and I think a lot of us get really comfortable with our friend groups, um, yep. with our hobbies, with our creativity, with our jobs, just with our environments in general. And we're never challenged to explore so much more of ourselves. And so how can I realistically do that? How can I create space in my life to get into different environments. So I have a key about that. I don't have the answer, but I yeah. do have a clue about that. Mm -hmm. When I got ready to change my job from the church to go to work for ABCCM, mm -hmm. Tina said to me, she said, do not tell Frank. Frank Harvey was is my spiritual father. I mean, he's he's always been a guiding light in my life. She made this powerful statement. She said, do not tell him this information yet. He's always been the loudest voice in your life because he's the first voice you talk to. In this situation, I'm asking that you put him last, not first, and who hears the information. Hmm. Now that's good. Because what she was saying is, let some new people weigh in first. Mm -hmm. Get some new information and not that his not that his opinion would be wrong or that he would say anything negative, just that he's always used to being the first person I consult, so I'm going to get his opinion. If I want to try something brand new, maybe include that person, but at the end of the process, not at the beginning of the process. Mm. And I thought that was a very unique perspective. Like, for instance, Greg and Sherry, they love you, they care about you, they have a perspective for you. But if you're emerging into a new season of your life that they're not really familiar with, 
they still get a voice. Mm -hmm. But maybe they're not the first person that speaks that issue. That may be a clue to something, Emily, to help us process this. Yeah, and I think that's also key when, um, or to prioritize having different kinds of people in our lives, right? Love it. Yep. You know, a lot of times um, we keep our circle so, so much of the same thing. Like everyone's going to give you the same advice. And so you need people with different life experiences, different backgrounds, different, um, yeah, just a completely different view and point of view on life, period, to be able to speak in and to show you different sides of something. Because it is really easy for us to get siloed and for us to get mm -hmm. in like an echo Absolutely. chamber. And so I I would really, really challenge us, you know, just even as we're in this moment, to start thinking about who we let speak into our lives. And is it someone who's going to give us a little pushback or ask us, a, you know, what is your motive here? Or are you doing it for this reason or that reason? Um, instead of just being like, oh, yeah, good, good. Yeah, do that. Sure, sure, sure. Um, you need voices who are going to challenge you. Because um, that's the only way I think I've ever grown is people push back on me and question things and ask me to dig deeper. Like, Emily, what's the real motive? Like, where where's your heart with this? What's the uh, why behind this? Um, because again, if we just get stuck and people, and we got a bunch of yes people around us or mm -hmm. people who are just going to be, you know, shrug off and just be like, yeah, go do that. Sure, sure, sure. But you need people of different walks of life to be able to give you a whole nother perspective. So what does your home girl know about getting a promotion at work? I mean, a lot of your mm -hmm. girls, they just don't know the business world you're in. Mm -hmm. And so like when I just left my job with ABCCM and started a nonprofit, I am now self-employed. Mm -hmm. So I've picked five people to interview that are self-employed business owners to get their impression of what they would do differently. Mm -hmm. And these are people, none of them that I've had lunch with, I've sat down with, I guess there's one guy. Well, there's one that I've had lunch with before. The rest of these are guys I've admired and I respect. Mm -hmm. And now in this season, I'm saying I'm going to take the time to in invite them to breakfast or lunch. I'm going to ask them questions. But I want to get their professional opinion. I'm not going to my best friends. I'm not going to my friend circle. I'm going to a business circle that has what I want. And I'm going to go to them and figure that out. And I'm sure if you were looking at any life change, that there are probably two or three people you could immediately think of. I wish I could take them to lunch because I would ask their opinion. And you're not friends. You're not like acquaintances. They're people you respect. And they're out there. And I'm positive that there's people that you could glean from. And people are more open to communicate with us than you realize. So, mm -hmm. for instance, even recently, I've had random people just... DM me on Instagram and I, and I'm very honest with my capacity. Um, you know, there's some people I'm like, yes, I, I have time and I feel a connection with them so I can give them more input, but there's never been anyone to reach out to me that I've been like, oh gosh, you're, you're taking too much of my time. Or especially if they just got a one-off question about, Hey Emily, how did you get into this? Or how did you know, um, it was time for you to shift careers? Like just really simple yeah. things. Like, if there's somebody that you admire, at, reach out and they may have margin to meet with you and talk with you. Or you may just have a singular question that you're like, I would just like to know how they got started in ABC, whatever. And and I think a lot of times we let we let that like fear of um, and getting like, oh, I'm so embarrassed if they, you know, don't ever answer my question. They leave me on red or whatever. But there are people who really do want to share what they know. They're very willing. It's like it's like me with my healing journey and where I'm at. Like, I want to help every person I possibly can right. um, get freedom and be able to um, walk in their, their, their new life and experience the fullness that they have. But, you know, I... I um, I, I would never just shut somebody down if they asked me that. I'm more than willing sure. to help. And so I think, again, we we get um, embarrassed or 
We let shame or some old rejection wounds stop us from asking people who would be very insightful for help. And and so you t- you talked about these these five people. Were you nervous to ask them? Was it awkward? Like well, share that again, because I like of- I like giving people practical things. Yeah, the five people that I picked are people that I know of. Mm-hmm. Some of them I had never talked to before. Some of them I've talked to, but not in this capacity. Some of them have come to me for advice about their issues. So now I'm sitting there going, I need your advice. Yeah. And they felt honored. Mm-hmm. That I mean, I'm sitting there saying, I need your help. Could you tell me what to do and what not to do? And they're like, well, this is what I would never do again. These are the things I would do. Mm-hmm. And anytime you need anything, let me know. I'm here to help. And I think most people want to help if you're teachable and you're Mm -hmm. willing to take the initiative to ask them to come sit down with you because you're gleaning on their wisdom and their strengths. And I've just, I've not been turned down. And all the people that I've interviewed have given me great advice Mm -hmm. and and they know things that I don't know. And, And I think that that's a beautiful thing. And I think if we turn, see, here's the thing. Every once in a while, I'll just I'll just mention like uh, you know to 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 my wife. I'm not your girlfriend. Okay, you need a girlfriend. You need to go shop, and I don't want to look at those pictures and tell you which dress I like better and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, you know, I it, I feel like that sometimes we put a circle of friends around ourselves, and then we use them for everything, including career counseling or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're not qualified for it. And it's our job to make sure that we let friends be friends and then we search for advice from others. By the way, at some point, we've got to read the quote to start of this conversation. No, I don't even think we need it. <laughs> okay. That, because, well, let me, let me say rebel. this. You rebel. I know. Well, let me say this. So I think another part of that is the reason why you've had so much success, two things, I think, with um, finding these people that are giving you this wisdom and advice. You have always done that for other people. You've always poured into other people. Like that's just naturally who you are. You have given people so much time and energy and your wisdom, your experiences. And number two, when people give you something to do, you go and do it. So I think that's also like, if somebody comes to you for advice and they're like, okay, well, you need to, all right, Nick, the next step for this business is you need to do this thing. You can't get on to the next level until you've done this. But then like you meet again. Oh, I've still not done that. Okay. Well, I told you, you yeah. need to do this uh, two weeks mm-hmm. later. Oh, well, I haven't done it. Okay. Well then we're stuck, you know? And a lot of people do that. They think like getting advice is like this quick fix. No, no, no. You have to put in the work. But again, there's, um, call it sowing and reaping. Some may call it karma, whatever karma. it is. But um if you are also available to help people around you. And that doesn't mean you have to be the absolute expert on everything or anything necessarily, but if you're also willing to help people, you will get that back in return. Um, You will see the benefits of that. So I really think those two things of you're always willing to help when somebody asks for it, or at least up to your ability and your capacity. And then you're also willing to, to apply what somebody's pouring into your life. Because there's nothing more frustrating for a mentor relationship or a guide relationship than when you keep saying the same things over and over and over and over again and nobody's applying it. So you have to be willing to do that. I well, Listen, you just said something brilliant. When you use the word guide instead of mentor, that was very helpful for me. A mentor is someone that you're, you've had a long-lasting relationship there might even be a defined relationship. Mm-hmm. A guide might just be for a season. Mm-hmm. I've met several guides. I pull up at a stop sign in my life. I don't know whether to go left, right, straight, or turn around and go back. And there's a guide there. And the guide's like, what are you looking for? And I'm less than, I'm looking for the, the the sunset. And he says, then go to the right. And and, and it made all the difference. It, it was just for a moment, for a season, where a mentor tends to be a f- more formal relationship. Mm-hmm. And I've always said this, if you're teachable, I can help you with anything. Somebody can help you with anything. It doesn't matter what problem you have, you can get help if you're teachable. There's somebody out there that knows how to fix that problem. Mm -hmm. If you're not teachable, it only takes one thing. It could be drugs. It could be 
driving fast. It could be girls. It could be money. It could be mm-hmm. fame. It could be whatever. Yeah. Gambling. It could be anything could sink your boat if you're not mm-hmm. teachable because no one can help you in that one area. And I value being teachable about as much as I value any any character trait. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Absolutely. Like when somebody is humble and willing to learn and willing to, sure. I yeah, just sit and even be silent sometimes and say like, I'm just going to absorb. I want to be a sponge. Like that says so, so much about that person without them having to say so much about themselves. Um, and even right now, like uh, I'm, I'm currently interviewing for interns this summer. And that's my biggest thing. Like while I'm doing these interviews, I am seeing how they respond. I'm seeing kind of, are are they here to learn or is this a paycheck? You know, because that's really, for me, that's an internship is a huge um, opportunity. But the the biggest thing I look for, I, I don't need somebody with the biggest skill set. I don't need them to be the most talented. I want somebody who's got a great attitude and wants to learn. And I don't care if you're 21 years old. I don't care if you're 81 years old. There there has to be this student mentality in all of us, I think, our whole lives. Um, there's nothing more, I don't know, that just turns me off from people when they just act so cocky and like they have everything figured out. Because no matter what, there's an area of life that you don't have, quote unquote, mastered. And so it's beautiful when I see these high capacity leaders who are humble and they're still like, oh, I'm still learning. I'm still sitting at the feet of somebody and just absorbing as much as I can and growing every day. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to toot your horn, sir. Cause I was having a conversation with some of our friends and that was one thing we were talking about. We were like, we love that Nick is such a mentor, father figure, role model for us. And the thing that you do is you are always willing to learn. You're always willing to grow and sit back and be like, I got it. I'm going to, I'm going to just absorb and apply as much as I can and listen and engage with this material. And it's been awesome even to watch you grow and be humble and say, I've changed my mind on some things. I maybe didn't do this right 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and I've adapted and I've moved. And it's just really refreshing because I don't meet a lot of people over the age of 50, honestly, who are willing to say, yeah, man, I got, I've still got a long way to go with some things. I still want to learn. I still want to be adaptable. And so thank you because you're a great, you're a great role model for that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to give a controversial shout out right now to Richard Rohr. And Richard Rohr wrote a book called Falling Upward. And it's about midlife and it's about at midlife, you face a crisis and either you realize you don't have it all figured out and there's much more to learn and you choose to become a student all over again, or you get entrenched in what you only believe, what you already believe and start ruling out any contradictory material Mm -hmm. and get really, really entrenched. And when you pass 50, it's pretty normal that you feel like you've already got it figured out and you only listen to the news that reaffirms you. You only pay attention to events that reaffirm you and you become ultra focused on what you already believe, whether you're right or wrong or not. Mm -hmm. And I made a decision after reading that book that I am going to be a lifelong learner of life. I've never been this age before. I've never been where I'm going to be in five years from now. And I believe in learning and and growing and I'm willing to be open. And you're like, yeah, but there's some core values we can't move away from. If your core values are true and valid, we'll figure that out. Why are you afraid to put your core values online? Why are you afraid of of saying, you know, everything is up for reconsideration because if it's right and true, it'll hold the test of time. And I'm not afraid of that. And so, and, and, and I want to speak to something you just said. I have changed my mind some, but what's changed the most in me is my heart, not my brain. Right. I still hold a lot of the same values I've always mm-hmm. held, Emily, mm-hmm. but dang, my, my heart has changed. Mm-hmm. 
living, meeting people, talking to people that disagree with me on certain issues, they have a point of view. They have a reference. They have a reason for why they believe what they believe. And when you listen to them, you may not change your mind on the on the actual issue, but hopefully your heart will be more empathetic and more open to have more conversation. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and again, that goes back to that teaching. That goes back to that growth. Um, when we are this, yeah, this goes right back to what we were just saying. If we don't change our environment and our circle and branch out and meet people and have conversations that are not full of judgment, that are not full of, yeah. um, wanting to walk away the person with that, that was right or win the argument, um, it, oh gosh, it just, it it makes us so much better humans like to, Mm -hmm. it grows our empathy. It grows our heart and our capacity to love and care for each other. Because at the end of the day, that's, that's really what it's about. Like if we could really love, learn how to love and care for one another and let that be what anchors us instead of I was right and you were wrong. And then, yeah, I, well, I could go off on a tangent, but I won't. Um, (laughs) but yeah. Letting that be what grounds us. Um, but most of us, we we love to stay in our silo because it's safe. Um, it's scary to go outside of that and meet new people. Um, and I've, I've definitely learned that just like with moving and being in a totally different place. Like uh, coastal Virginia is very different than the mountains of North Carolina. But the people I've met, the stories, the experiences – it has made me a better person. It has made me love more. And so for that, you you may live in the smallest town in the United States, but there's still people there that can stretch you and grow you and show you mm-hmm. that there's so much more to life and that you have such a grander capacity to love and care for other people, no matter who they are, what, what they are. <laughs> So I guess I'll respond to that by saying something. Your friends in your current circle Mm -hmm. of people, your influencers, Mm -hmm. probably have a couple things in common. One, you're very comfortable with them. And two, you have a long history with them. So they're the experts on your history. Mm -hmm. That does not qualify them to be the, the experts on your future. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, if you're trying to make a future decision, a spouse, a job, a career, a relocation, whatever, maybe talking to the experts of your past are not the best people to talk to about making that decision. Mm -hmm. Maybe we keep them in our lives and have reunions and laugh and joke and get together on a regular basis like you did recently when you came back to the mountains. I've seen several different posts about your peeps having brunch with you on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I I know where you've been, what you're doing. One oh, yeah. stood me up for you, by the Good. way. That's good. Um, <laughs> my daughter-in-law. Um, love you, Hayes. Love um, you, and Hayes. Then sec- and then second of all is, um, but maybe as we're looking at new seasons of our life, we pick random strangers even. That we mm-hmm. look at and they have what we want or they've been there. Because we don't have to follow and emulate everything they say. But my gosh, if they've done the stuff and earned the position, they can teach us some things. And we have the ability to, to, to eat the meat and spit out the bones. We don't have to listen to what anybody tells us 100%. But what if 75% of what they tell you is like gold? It's just wonderful that you can't get anywhere else. Wouldn't you put up with 100% of the con- conversation to get 75% of the gold? Yeah. And it's, I would. it's wild, too, that um, you're talking about strangers or people who are new. Um, I had a coworker. Uh, she recently moved, but I only knew her for nine months. And before she moved, she came into my office, shut the door, and she just affirmed all these things and, like, told me who I – you know, it was just speaking into – who I was, not what I was, um, but who I am. And it was the most beautiful thing. And I was like, this woman hasn't even known me a full year. And she's just like speaking all of these beautiful truths. She's affirming me. And it was really powerful because again, 
There was no history there. There was no, um, no, like, oh, well, I remember, you know, five years ago, blah, blah, blah. It was all about who I was in a new season. And that's all she could speak from. And so it was just the most beautiful thing. I was like, this is so cool. So you have to be really open to letting people affirm you. And I've, I've, got, a, I've got another friend here. Like from the moment we met, we just connected. Like on a deep spiritual level, like connected. And the way she affirms me and speaks these like really poignant, like to the tiniest detail of my character. And I'm like, how have you not known me since I was like five years old kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. it's those that mm-hmm. deep, but it's because when we meet those people who are guides or like new relationships for that season, yep. like it is this beautiful instantaneous thing that happens. And I think we've got to be really open to, to letting them speak and to like really hearing that out again, being teachable. They may say things that we've never heard, Um, but that's the beautiful thing. We take the information, we hold it, we sit with it, we process it with, with it. And then like, if it sticks, it sticks. And I think that's another thing too. Like some things aren't going to always stick and that's okay. Like you can release things. Um, Mm -hmm. you have the power to take ownership of any words that are spoken over your life and either take ownership and say, yeah, that is me. That's me right now in this season. Or that's, that is future me. Or you're like, "Mm, no. That ain't it. I'm just going to release it. Like you have more power in that than you realize. Um, but it is, it's been wild. Definitely meeting the la- people in the last year and a half and like just the way things have aligned and the voices and how beautiful they are. Um, I'm yep. so thankful for and, that. And, and here's the thing. If someone is a potential guide in your life, mm-hmm. that means they don't have a lot of history with you, which means they don't have a lot of equity with you. The problem with sometimes the older friends we have in our world is they gain something from us that if we change, they won't get that anymore. So there's an equity. They get something out of the relationship. And so the thing about a new guide is, why did you invite me to lunch? Well, I just wanted to pick your brain and ask you some questions about this promotion and see what you would do if you were in my shoes. Mm -hmm. And the next 30 minutes to an hour... They can be frank and honest with you because they're not propping up some need they're getting met from you. They just met you or they just became aware. And I think that that's our responsibility. I'm not saying throwing away our old friends, Mm -hmm, but recognize our old friends are not relationships for every circumstance in our new environment. And maybe we need to invite some new people in that don't have any equity in our relationship. Right. Well, and and that even, as you were telling that, that made me think of, um, you know, when you do make a major life change, it's like I have a friend who's walking in her sobriety right now, and Mm -hmm. they just got a handful of friends that um, they still like to go out and drink, and that's all they, Mm -hmm. that's all she ever did with those friends anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, But you also have to recognize like, okay, that's what that relationship was. And yes, Mm -hmm. that might be painful. But if that was an unhealthy place that was dragging you down, and that's all those people were, they were just drinking buddies, then that's what that was. Mm-hmm. And that's not serving me now in this season. Um, you can still love them, support them, cheer them on, but you're not going to meet up with them at 9 p.m. at a bar because it's not in alignment with your season of life, with your, with your healing. Okay, but M, somebody's going to push back on you, and they're going to say, Man. "You threw, you got sober and threw me away," and 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 you've got to be able to say, "Yeah, but we never had a friendship outside of alcohol." I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there are people that say, "Oh, you've got too good for us, and now you don't, you don't want to hang out with us anymore." And you're like, "No, I care about my sobriety." And unfortunately, when I look at our relationship, everything was based around. Alcohol party and late night, Friday night, mm-hmm. Saturday night, all that stuff. And we've got to be brave enough to say, did we build a relationship outside of the behavior or the mm-hmm. the common ground that we had? Or was it only around those things? And if it really was just drinking buddies, you got to be okay walking away from that if you need your sobriety. Yeah. Or say, hey, instead of partying, 
let's yeah. go get coffee. Like if they love you and they yeah, want to be Sherbert. in a relationship. We're doing <laughs> Sherbert on Saturday. Let's do it. Sherbert. Yeah. Like they'll, <laughs> they'll be, no one. <laughs> Hey, I love a raspberry Sherbert. Um, okay. but no, they would definitely be, if they love you and they care about you and they want to stay in a relationship with you, they will support that growth and that health, especially in something in like that scenario. Um, yeah. So they would, yeah, they would be willing to pivot. And so you've got to, again, lay that out before them and say, this is who I am. And not being afraid to to really communicate who you are. Love it. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Nick, I appreciate this conversation. I think this was great. I hope this was helpful and beneficial um, to you all out there. Send this podcast to somebody. Um, I've recently talked to some people where they're like, Hey, we've been sending your podcast to some people and we got, we got incredible feedback today. I want to thank you guys. Those of you who send us feedback about what you're, you've learned for the pod, podcast or like life changes. I cannot get over how many people are changing jobs right now. Um, what? And it's so cool to hear that feedback or people who just, you had an aha moment. And we are just really, really humbled that these conversations where Nick and I are really just just bringing our our vulnerable selves to the table, we don't have everything figured out. We're processing and moving. Yeah, (laughs) we're just moving um, through this just like any of you are. And so we're just really humbled that um, our stumblings in this conversation help others. That's that's the fascinating piece. People will send us stuff saying, oh my gosh, I just quit my job and I started this new adventure. You all gave me such clarity. We're like, clarity on what? Praise we're God. just processing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're just processing out loud, trying to figure this out and add something to the conversation. But I'm delighted that you heard something that answered yes. the question you've been asking. Mm-hmm. Run. Just run and go yeah. do it. But we're honored when you give us feedback because... Mm-hmm. We set out from the very beginning, we don't have the answers, but we process out loud and we get closer when we do talk and try to share with each other. So we're delighted when we help anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And we're cheering you on. Let Nick and I Mm -hmm. know, like every person who's um, written in and shared this, like it is such a blessing and an honor again that these, these words, these conversations um, really help you guys. It it means a lot. Um, All right, Nick. Uh, let's wrap things up here. Friends, thank you so much again for listening. Uh, make sure that you are following us on all of our socials, Facebook, Instagram. You're subscribed on YouTube. Uh, of course, you can listen to our podcast anywhere podcasts are streamed. Um, email us. Let us know. Like I said, we love feedback. If you've got, if you find an interesting quote or an interesting topic, um, send that our way. We've got some really cool interviews coming up. I am so stoked. Yes. Um, Nick has found some really cool topics and interviewees. And so we've got some really amazing things going on. And also shout out to Caleb Honorkamp for creating this incredible music um, that we get to use here on this podcast. Allison Frost from Before the Foundations Photography for our photos that are so beautifully taken. And my fiance, um, Adrian Vosh, for producing and putting up with Nick and I. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, you, Adrian. We love you all, and we will see you on the next episode. Have an amazing day.